interesting. Um, uh, Marty says, I reckon that big terrace on the left-hand side is worthy of consideration. Yep. So that's a possibility on the left-hand side, uh, meaning this whole area over here, but this, this section right in here looks quite interesting to me. And actually, even along this edge of the railroad tracks, it looks kind of interesting. A little deceptive, though. This is probably a big drop. So there isn't much beach as, you know, as much as I would think, not as much as there is over here. So, and that's something else you're gonna kind of look for is where there's beach gravels and, and cobble piles. Then you start having some things that, you know, indicate where the water slowed in high flood and dropped out the big boulders. Those big boulders drop out along with the smaller pieces of gold. And of course the sands drop out with the smallest pieces of gold. Um, and by the way, smallest pieces of gold may, may end up being the highest volume of gold that you can find. So don't discount that. Uh, many a person has made a fair amount of money off of gold dust. Uh, gold nuggets are a rarer thing. They can be something worth going after, but they will basically get uh, be problematic in that they're rarer to find. They do fetch upwards of two to four times, well, two to three times spot. Uh, not uncommon. If it's a big piece, you might be able to get a bit more. And so uh, the thing you want to recognize is that, you know, if you're talking bullion uh, and you're talking flower gold, yeah, this stuff melts down quite nicely. Then it depends on the riverbed and the purity of the gold that you're finding there. And that's a natural thing that occurs depending upon the local gold uh, supply and the weathering conditions. Some places can be as high as, you know, 23 or so carat, 22. And other places, you know, it's 18, 16. You know, it's, it's got a lot of silver, or copper, other alloys in it. Um, let's see. Uh, Land says, unfortunately, the feature I see is falling rocks on my head. Yeah, that's entirely possible. My guess is this cliff is, you know, it could be pushing uh, 300 feet up at this point up here. Um, certainly 100 feet up and that would definitely hurt because that rock's big enough to make a mess out of you given the size of these railroad tracks. Um, so don't get under the rocks if they're moving. Kevin says, the feature I see most is little or no accesses in dry places to dig. Yes, there are no roads here except rail. So the only way you're going to get through here is to hike along the rail and the only way you find that would be if you had some access. The other possibility would be some kind of boat, you know, if you had a, if you had some kind of a, I don't know what, because that looks like pretty nasty rapid. So it had to be a rubber raft or something like that. But yep, that looks pretty nasty and hard to get into, but that makes it all the more interesting because that means there haven't been many people there prospecting, have there? Um, Janet says, I like the spot on the lower left above the railroad tracks. Okay, so she likes this area on the lower left above the railroad tracks up in here. Um, and, and that's an interesting point with a detector because if you're finding gold in this reach down here and that gold supply were up in these regions, this looks like a nice little alluvial uh, section. And generally anything that weathers from the rock above is gonna drop down here and get stuck. And if the gold was being supplied, it's not uncommon to find bench placers in this region because remember, this is where the river cut centuries ago. It was up here somewhere, cutting through and leaving a gravel bar behind, like over a big region in here. So it's a good idea to look up here and see if you see things that are that look flattened and perhaps rounded cobbles. See how these are jagged, these little things in here. If you start seeing things that look a little rounder, like some of these do down here, but you saw them up here, get suspicious and check it out. You might find yourself a, a high bench and high benches can be the richest kind of plaster prospecting there is. Uh, the blue lead is oftentimes found in California here, the, the great blue lead and up through, you know, up through the Sierra Nevada and on uh, can be a tremendous source of gold, but it's hit and miss because it, it got undercut and then broken apart and then uplifted and things moved around. So it's a little scrambled as to exactly where that blue lead goes. So it's worthy checking something like that out because you might find yourself in some pretty serious gold that is away from the river entirely. So that's a good point. Um, let's see. Uh, Adventures in Prospecting. He says, I listen to the advice of any person that uses the word I reckon and them boulders. Hey, I like that. That's good advice. That their advice is great. Uh, gold is where you find it. So jump in and start dredging. Good luck. Yes. 
but it's best to start dredging where you might likely find it. It makes that dredge run a whole lot more efficient. So I guess that'll be it for right now. I just thought I'd capture my thoughts on what everybody's responding to. Thanks everybody for the comments. Right. Catch you then. Bye. Prospector Jess over and out.